Now you may have noticed that some of my assembly language code has looked a little bit different in the last few videos. That's because I am using a new assembler. Now I didn't write this assembler, it was written for me by Timothy Morgan who has helped me out in the previous course and in this course with a lot of the coding. So thank you for that Timothy. Um, I doubt if I would have been able to write a piece of code um, just as uh, clean and smart as you have written it. So uh, it's made my life a lot easier when it comes to uh, finding the bugs within my assembly language and it's going to help every other student as well who takes the course. So I'll quickly show you the setup that I have now and I'll show you the assembler but we won't get into any detail it's just to show you the setup that I have now. So I have two um, little links here okay so the first one here shortcuts takes me through to this folder here this folder has got the new assembler one I've called it so I just put it in this folder I've also got another two folders one called ASM so that's going to be the assembly language programs that go in that folder and then whenever we've assembled it the results which are the machine code will go into the MC folder. Now there's another little thing here I've got a little batch file so if I open that up I think I can go to edit you can see here that it just sets up a, a little um, file that allows me to just type in assemble and then the program name and whenever it will go and assemble that program name and it will save it in the folder uh, machine code that's MC okay so that again that's all part of the assembler okay um, now if I was to assemble a program so I'll actually pick out one for the moment so if I go in here and we've got one say say that one called rectangle so that rectangle is a little assembly language program then all I need to do is go into the command prompt so this is a shortcut to the command prompt and it takes me straight to the folder that I need to be in and I can simply type in assemble rectangle and it'll go ahead and it will assemble it and it will save the machine code into that folder which I showed you the MC folder. Um, now if I was to make a mistake this is the other um, added advantage of using this new assembler I'll show you an example here of me making a mistake. So if I was to do something like make this 1-1 one, one, and I'll save this and in order to assemble it again all I need to do is do the up arrow key and I've got the uh, command there and you see I've now actually starting to get error code so it says a, a syntax error on line 11 now there's no any line numbers here but you could have it so that you can set up with line numbers but you'd count down to line 11 and then you can find your error quite simply you can see well that's an obvious error um, and there might be other errors here so let's say um, I miss out a value here I'll save and again we'll run that and it says a syntax error line 23 invalid number format so again you can go to line 23 and you can find it and it's an obvious fix okay so there are a, a, I think there's a half a dozen or so um, different error codes that we have there at the moment but as the program uh, gets more complicated possibly more error codes will be added and also uh, more and more commands uh, will gradually be added as and when we require them so I'll let you see a quick look at the code so this is the code here I'll just open it up and well that's not what I wanted I'll just open it up there one edit there you go so it's opened up in notepad so you can see the um, program here um, and it's actually written 
in a much uh, smarter and neater format than the program that I wrote and it's also about a quarter of the length as well so it's an excellent tool and it's really allowed me to speed up a lot of my assembly language programming so whenever you go to use it through the course um, it will help uh, a great deal so that's all for this video as we continue, well, we will add more mathematical functions and more graphical functions as well. So I have to add in an elliptic function, so I may well do that one next. But so far, all we've added are integer uh, libraries. Uh, but I have courses there on how to design a floating point unit. And I've already got a floating point adder, subtractor, and a multiplier sitting there at the moment. I've got to generate the division and square root. So whenever those are generated, we can add a floating point unit into our design, and then we can build up a floating point library as well and make the CPU a lot more powerful. But that's going to come through the rest of this course. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.